What is up guys and welcome back to another Raid Shadow Legends video with me, The Real Deal. So today we are going to be working on Hydra Normal. Um, a lot of people have been asking me for content on this um, and I feel that other content creators have sort of neglected this subject. They've jumped straight to Hydra Hard and Hydra Normal has been overlooked. You know, the people have spoken. So this is what you guys want and this is what you're going to get. So I've got three team comps for you. Um, I'm gonna sort of show you how I take on the Hydra head. Oh, take on the Hydra first, and then we'll look at gear masteries, and you know what is important and what champions you need to be bringing in to take on Hydra. Um, so you may not have the gear and the stats and the champion pool, but this is something you worked for. You know you have to work towards it, and you know either you need to have the patience of a saint or you need to have Bill Gates' debit card. So if you've got one of those things, you're in luck, my friend. We are going to get there. So you may not be able to one key Hydra Normal today, but even if you can two or three key Hydra Normal, you know, this is really going to help boost your account because that stone skin, the protection gear, and getting Mithrala from those fragments, they are all massive game changers for your account, and it's definitely worth investing into. So let's just hop straight into it, guys. So this is team number one. We've got Husk, Rector Draft, Lydia, Mordecai, Godseeker, and Doom Priest. Um, so the head that I like to focus down first is usually the head of poison, especially on this rotation, um, or the head of fear. But if I've got the head of fear, then I'll be bringing in Shamuel. Otherwise, I'd try to ignore it. And the other head that I usually take out second will be the head of wrath. Um, because the head of wrath, in my opinion, is the most difficult head to deal with, and it does the most damage, and it can just wipe your team. So not a big fan of that one. And if you take it out second, I always just hope with a bit of RNG, it doesn't come back, and we can just focus on the other heads. So yeah, as you can see here, I'm focusing the poison head at the moment. Um, and the one head that I don't like to focus is, I think it's called the Head of Suffering, um, which is the one that has ally protection and puts weaken on your team. So that one um, is my favourite head. Um, so basically, I try to avoid doing damage to that head, because it's so useless that it's actually good for you to keep it up there. Um, the head of cleansing is quite easy to control. Um, you know, that's the one that um, removes basically all your debuffs. But now you can CC it with uh, provoke. So that is really important. So um, the best buff, well, the best way to deal with that head is with someone that does provoke. And there's so many champions that can do provoke now that it's quite easy to control. So it makes it a lot easier. Um, the head of poison, you can either cleanse the poisons or you can bring out a block debuff. The only problem with block debuffs um, is that it can get stolen from the head of mischief. Um, so And that can work against you, especially if you bring someone in that's doing HP burn. So the head of mischief um, is can be a real pain. Um, but there's two ways to deal with it. Either you bring a champion in that does self buffs and brings in um, and put loads of resistance on them. But it still has a 3% chance to be stolen. In my opinion, uh, opinion, my in my opinion, the best way to deal with it is bringing block debuffs. I would say block debuffs is probably the best buff uh, debuff against the Hydra. Um, it stops the poison cloud from the head of poison, and it just stops um, the head of mischief stealing buffs. So it, it is a really good way to deal with it, um, and it also stops the head of um, I think it was suffering the one that does the ally protection. It stops that ally protection being shared across the team's world, reducing your damage, so it keeps your damage up nice and high as well. Um, the Head of Wrath is, like I said, probably the worst head. Um, it Basically, when you sort of get to 15 stacks, he turns around and just does a big smack. So the way you control um, the Head of Wrath is you want to bring in decrease attack, um, strengthens really good, shields can really help against that as well. So those are sort of like the three main ways of dealing with the Head of Wrath. Um, just trying to think if there's anything else that you can bring in. Not really, um, to be honest. I mean, Perfect Veil does help as well because that reduces AoE damage. But there's not a lot, there's not much else you can do. Um, the Head of Fear, you can either bring in a Shamuel or someone that does cleanses to deal with that head. Um, but usually um, there is team comps that I bring in where if the Head of Fear does come up, I don't have a way to deal with it, but I just ignore it. And the other thing you can do is when you've got uh, true fear on your champions, what you do is 
um, save their big hitting abilities and just do the A1. Do their A1, remove that true fear, and then you uh, do your A2 or your A3 and you just pump out that big damage and it's fine. So you can sort of avoid it that way. So let's have a look at the team comp. So first up, we got Husk. Um, so Husk is a great champion and he can be replaced by anyone that's like a hard hitting AoE damage dealer. Um, but so yeah, he he's great because he's got loads of HP. So he's really hard to kill. Great survivability. But he also has a provoke on his A1. So you may have seen that I've been using that on the head of cleansing throughout the fight. Um, so here yeah, he's been doing that. So yeah, great, great champion. Um, and he's even good in normal. A lot of people rave about how good he is in like brutal and nightmare. But even in hard and normal, he's still doing some solid work for you. So yeah, great champion, great, great champion. Um, Rector Draft. Um, so she's doing loads of healing and she's reviving. So we've got two revivers in this team comp. And yeah, it's, it's great to have revivers because obviously if someone goes down, they're going to bring them back for you. And it's probably, it's pretty essential because it's very hard to keep your team alive. Um, and also having that perfect veil, as I said before, is going to reduce AoE damage. And sorry, perfect veil is great for the head of fear as well. So um, yeah, that's going to help us with that as well. Uh, Lydia, everyone will get her eventually from doing Faction Wars, um, and she is just great. Um, to be fair, she could be replaced by any champion that basically has Strengthen. Um, that is the main reason she's in this team comp, is to reduce the damage that we receive from the Head of Wrath, and all the heads, to be fair, but mainly from the Head of Wrath. But also, that drop defense and weaken is significantly going to increase your damage and really bump up your numbers, so that is another good thing. Um, Mordecai... He's just literally in there for his H, uh, AoE HP burn. Any champion that does AoE HP burn or Geomancer are great options for this. Um, they just, you know, do so much damage to the heads and slowly bring down, um, you know, their HP and just doing like damage across the board um, constantly. The only thing you have to watch out is you do need a way to deal with the head of cleansing because otherwise it's going to get taken off and that will reduce your damage significantly. So you don't want that to happen. Um, but yeah, can be replaced by any HP burn champion, AoE HP champion, except for Ultimate Garlic Bread, who's just absolutely useless and you should never be using them. Uh, Godseeker Anari, what a champion. She is amazing for this. So she's doing um, single target healing and she's doing AoE healing and she's got two revives. So when a champion's about to die, she puts a revive and death on them. They drop, they can pop back up. And then you can start healing up again. Or um, she can do another revive as well. So she's got two revives and kick, which is pretty sick. Um, but the second revive uh, reduces cooldowns on that champion skill. So they can just start popping off again, especially because it's usually going to be your damage dealers go down anyway. So she's going to bring them back up again and they can just start popping off and taking out those heads again, which is just great. Um, and then last of all, we've got Doom Priest, who's literally just in there to cleanse and do healing and she's in a relentless set which is great because it just constantly keeps your healing going and yeah just an amazing champion so another really important thing in hydra is you want to be focusing um the heads that go down so obviously when you hit them you do massive massive damage to them and that's how you get those big numbers um the other thing is um when they've got the egg on them you do want to focus that as well just because um, that's going to stop you from killing that head and getting all that damage. So it's not always doable, but if you can, I would definitely prioritize the head that's got the egg on it. Um, and then, of course, whenever your champion's getting eaten, you need to start focusing that head and taking that out first. So I'm just going to check what have we done. We've talked about the champions and we have talked about um, the Hydra heads and how to take them out and how to get damage. So actually, let's look at the team comp. Okay, so I've skipped to the end of the run. Um, we did it in 14 minutes, 35 seconds, which is pretty fast. You know, you don't want to be doing this all day. And um, 9.5 mil damage. You know, we have gone well over that threshold of 6.6 .6 mil for that uh, for that one key. Um, Husk, 3.9 million damage. You know, he's doing a lot of work here for us. Solid, solid champion. Um, Mordecai at 2.8 mil damage, um, you know, also doing a lot of work for us. And, you know, like I said, it's not always just about 
getting those big numbers, but then then being useful because like you can't target the head of mischief. So having that HP burn does really help with that as well. And you do need to time these things as well. Um, yeah, but uh, Godseeker, 1.2 million as well. She's doing some serious work as well. You know, every little bit helps to get that one key. And um, healing, 550k, very respectable. Um, Doom Priest, 440k as well. Very good as well. But you got to remember they are doing so much as well because they are doing that cleansing for us. And Rector Draft, just going mental. And uh, 1.3 mil just by themselves, almost triple of what Godseeker and Doom Priest are doing. Um, yeah, Rector Draft is doing a lot of work for us here as well. So let's uh, check out the gear and stats and masteries. Um, so Husk, um, HP is really important to him, so you want as much HP as possible. And I'd say with any damage dealer that you are bringing in for Hydra, HP is really important. You want like a minimum of sort of 50k, especially when you start pushing for a hard, brutal, or nightmare. Um, so yeah, 66k HP, so HP, really important stat. Defense, kind of important, but I've not really put a lot on Husk, to be fair. Um, speed, crit rate, crit damage, and a bit of accuracy would be nice as well. Um, that's why I brought Mordecai, uh, Mordecai as the lead, to give us more um, accuracy so we can actually land that Provoke on the um, head of Cleansing. Uh, Ret's Draft, we're going to be focusing on HP, defense, speed, um, and you could go attack and resistance. Uh, sorry, Accuracy and resistance. Um, the accuracy is just really good to land that A1 uh, decrease attack on the head of Hydra. Uh, Lydia, you want HP, defense, speed. Um, crit rate and crit damage can be useful if you can get it. But um, otherwise, I prioritize resistance and accuracy over everything else. Um, my one's actually she's built for Doom Tower and also sort of uh, Arena. She's not, she's sort of like, a, I've got her like in a general build. Um, Mordecai. Um, you want to focus HP, um, defense, speed, crit rate, and accuracy. Uh, Godseeker. So this is my worst built Godseeker for this one. Um, if you look at my other Hydra video, I'll put it in the comments below and pin it. Um, so it's called Nekmo versus Hydra. And my Godseeker's got, like just so well built for that. She's got like 70k HP, I think. Um, and she's way built way better than this one. So um, I'll share that below. Um, and I don't think a Guardian set is really good on her either. I'd say I'd definitely use a regen set over Guardian uh, because you don't want your uh, Godseeker to take all the damage because if she dies, she's not going to be able to revive. So stats you want to focus are, are HP, defense, um, speed, and accuracy or resistance. So accuracy is really good on her because she does reduce the turn, uh, the duration of um, buffs. So that could be really useful on the Hydra heads. And then uh, Doom Priest. Um, HP, defense, speed, and resistance are the only stats that matter on her. So, masteries, um, husk, just very, very standard build. Uh, Rector draft. Oh, I need to actually finish her for war masters just to help pump out some extra damage. Uh, Lydia is built for arena and sort of doom tower. It's quite a general build, as I said before. Um, but Mordecai. Um, I've not actually finished them yet, so that would actually probably help bump up their damage a lot. Um, and I definitely would go um, support tree and offense. So getting War Master and just trying to get um, anything that gives you accuracy and um, anything that uh, increases your turn meter on the support tree is what I'd be taking. Um, Godseeker, very standard build for her as well. And same for Doom Priest. So team, num uh, team? team number two. We got Husk, Ninja, Bar Bardrill, uh, Brogni, the Mitha, and Seal. So um, let's just go straight to their stats, and I'll talk about what they're doing here. So again, we've got that Husk who's doing so much damage for us. Um, Ninja, great champion. You can see here though, his HP is a little bit low, and he was actually dying a lot through the fight, so that's probably reduced his damage significantly. Um, but yeah. Fast, crit rate, crit damage on him, and accuracy. Um, you probably want at least 300 accuracy on him and probably 50k HP just so that he stays really alive and that he does land those HP burns. Um, needs at least 300 accuracy, I'd say, to sort of when you start to get a bit higher up. And he needs like sort of 50k HP again. Uh, mine's really lacking on that HP. Um, he was dying a lot, so that's really reduced his damage. So you do want to, you know, like I said, keep them nice and healthy. And he can be replaced by any AoE or hard-hitting Nuka. Um, and then 
Bardrill. So he's in here to um, deal with the Head of Mischief. So he's going to be putting that counter-attack buff on him each turn. And that's why he's got so much resistance. And he's going to be um, a centre of attention. And he's going to just be draw it, to, you know, taking that off. So that's really good because that means I can bring in Brogny, who's a great champion as well. Uh, and as you can see, um, you actually it's the only time you want a champion to be really slow so that H um, so that counter attack stays on him for as long as possible, and yeah, resistance yeah just as high as possible, and that will hopefully just keep that head under control because it is a very annoying one. Um, Brogny is amazing in Guardian set. Um, he's going to be taking so much damage, and you do stack HP on him as much as possible. So loads of HP, bit of defense, nice and fast. And you could, you know, either have laser resistance onto him. So if he does get targeted, um, you know, the buffs don't get taken from him or put loads of accuracy on him. So he lands his HP burn and that helps with doing damage on the boss. Uh, because we've got um, B B B B B Bordrill. Oh, I don't even know. The resistance dwarf. Because we've got the resistance dwarf, um, that means you can bring Demitha, who's got block damage and does insane healing. Um, so yeah, she's great. Um, just loads of HP, defense, speed, and um, I decided to go resistance with her because she hasn't got any reason to have any accuracy. And then Seal. Um, so my Seal, I've not even put her in a special build for Hydra. She's in a classic speed and stun set for this. And yeah, so you want to focus on HP, defense, and speed. And um, doesn't need accuracy for this actually. Oh no, no. She does have a um, slow on her A1, so actually having accuracy on this is useful. I was thinking I use her more for Doom Tower and that she does throw out a laser stuns for that. And obviously stuns don't work on the Hydra heads. Um, so have a quick look at their masteries. So um, the Bearded Dwarf, um, I've not done masteries on him because I've reached the resistance stats. But if you did, um, I'd probably go down the resistance route and then offense so he just does more damage um but yeah if you do if you are lacking resistance on him just go down the defense tree and just grab all those resistance slots uh my ninja i could probably actually re-gear he used to be in a very specific clan boss team so he wasn't allowed to have anything that increased his turn meter but i could change that uh brogny is in a very sort of generic build and demitha i've not actually finished but she's still doing the job and Seal is built for Dungeon Waves and um, Doom Tower hard. But, you know, she can still, you know, you could you could change her build for this and just have a um, support tree and offensive tree um, for Hydra hard if you did, uh, sorry, normal, if you did want to change it up. But this is good enough to get you through it. So team number three, we've got Herndig, Seeker, Akoth, Umbral, Vogoth and Ursula. So um, Herndig, 3.7 million damage, solid, solid work from him. Akoth, my goodness, he's done, done a lot of damage here actually as well, with uh, 4.4 million doing the most damage, quite surprising actually. And Vogoth, um, I don't, I just randomly brought her in, um, no, sorry, brought him in. So it's because he's got moobs, I always get confused what gender he is, it's the moobs. Um, but yeah, he's doing loads of healing and he's also got a provoke on his A1 that I was throwing out there occasionally as well. And Ursula, great AoE reviver. And she also has decreased attack. So, um, yeah, Herndig and Akoth just doing damage. Seeker is boosting our turn meter and CCing with Provoke on the um, head of Cleansing. And it does land a lot, even though it's the wrong affinity. So that's great. Uh, Umbral was there for block debuffs. And then, say, I did miss um, a Provoke with Seeker, and it's a crucial point in the Hydra fight then I would throw out um, Provoke with Umbral, but I did try to avoid doing that. Then I had Vogoth as another backup Provoker, if I ever did need it. And then, yeah, Ursula for that decrease attack and AoE revive. And, yeah, basically, um, Vogoth could be replaced by any healing champion, Umbral by any block debuff champion, um, Seeker by any, you know, Provoke champion, and, yeah, Ursula by any Reviver. So hopefully this is sort of showing you that, you know, that you can be flexible with your teams and you can create something new. You don't just have to copy the exact teams that I've got. Um, so Herndig, yeah, he's a bit he's a bit squishy, um, but yeah, decent amount of attack. So, so I want to focus on his HP 
attack if you can, then speed, crit rate should be 100, uh, loads of crit damage, and then 316 damage, so he does land his debuffs. Um, Seeker, HP, defense, speed, and accuracy. Uh, Akoff, um, so he's in a stun set, so he could even be doing even more damage. Um, I used to use him in Doom Tower hard um, for the waves, but yeah, so we're going to be focusing on HP, defense, speed, and accuracy. Uh, Umbral, ideally I'd like her to have more HP, defense, but she's built for arena, so um, she's got loads of speed and accuracy for that. Uh, Vogoff, triple mortal set, which is great for him, and you just want to focus HP, um, defense, bit of speed, and accuracy. And then Ursula, um, I would probably change her set to regen and immortal, um, but she's currently in speed and double immortal, and she's got... So you want to focus on your HP, defense, speed, and um, accuracy. So Herndig and Akoth are just both in... Well, actually, Herndig is in a Nuka build. Akoth isn't. So Akoth could be doing even more damage for us on Hydra. And actually, looking at how good he's doing here, I might actually consider redoing his masteries and bringing him in for like Hydra Hard or even Brutal. Um, my Seeker is built for PvP. Um, so that's like a PvP build. So you could easily change it up and just copy what Herndig's got um, and swap it out for, instead of Helm Smasher, for Warmaster to do more damage there. Uh, Umbral, I've not finished her yet because at the time I was doing it, I was using her. I do use her for Arena. I was undecided if I was going to use her in PvP or PvE mainly. I think she's going to be specialised in Arena. So I'm going to go for Defence Tree, but for... Um, Hydra, I would do um, Support Tree and Offensive Tree and go down to Warmaster instead of Eagle Eye. Vagoth, um, actually this build is solid for Hydra um, because you're going to be with that uh, Mastery at the very bottom bulwark. You're going to be um, proccing loads of heals from Vagoth, so that's going to keep your team nice and healthy. And then Ursula is in pretty much solid build, haven't quite finished it. I just don't think there's anything that she really benefits on that tree, so... To save um, gems, I've just not finished it off because you know you've got to try and save energy where you can when you're free to play. And then very last, I just wanted to show you what I can do on Hydra Hard. So um, I made a video on this, which um, was my Necmo versus Hydra. So I will share that in the comments. But it's just to sort of show you that you can when you start to get better champions and your pool champion pool does grow. Um, and I did do this run with very similar stats that you've seen earlier. Um, so you can, you will get there eventually and you'll be, you know, you will be able to do even Hydra hard. So that is the end of the video guys. I really hope this helps you guys progress in Hydra. Um, if anyone does have any like team comps that they use to beat Hydra normal, please leave them in the comments below because that will help other people progress. And yeah, I'm hoping that everyone, you know, is gonna be able to start doing that Hydra normal and getting all those juicy, juicy rewards. Um, I just wanted to show you, so basically I'm just doing some Minotaur runs at the moment. Um, these are some like up, upcoming champion guides I want to do. So I want to do Vlad, uh, Kalvalax and Tyrant. Uh, Tyrant's going to be really good for Hydra as well. So looking forward to doing some content on that. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching guys. I hope you had a good time. I know I have. Um, please leave me a cheeky thumbs up if you've enjoyed today's video. And make sure you smash, smash, smash that subscribe. And I will see you in my next video. Peace!